In this clip, we'll establish how to prove the unbiasedness of OLS estimators in a multiple regression model, and we use the matrix form. It's just by, by far the most convenient way to do that. When you write down a matrix regression model, you have to be aware of the dimensions. Importantly, we have k explanatory variables, of which the first one would usually be a constant. So we would have k minus 1 non-constant explanatory variables. We also have to recall what the assumptions are we are working with. So these are the uh, multiple linear regression assumptions. The first one being that this is actually the, the correct population model. Assumption two being that the data which we have, yi and xi, xi's are now k um, vectors with k elements, that these are actually random draws. They are randomly sampled from the population. The uh, third assumption, as for the simple regression model, assumes that we have variation in all explanatory variables, but the constant, I should say, but also that there's no exact linear relationship between any of the explanatory variables. In matrix form, we'll say that X is full rank, so a full column rank. So we don't have any um, linear dependencies between the variables. And the fourth assumption is the zero conditional mean assumption. As in the uh, simple regression case, we're assuming that conditional on any values for our explanatory variables, of which we have k, the expected value for the error term is zero. In other words, the, the use and all the x variables, explanatory variables, are uncorrelated. You will remember that the old S estimator for beta, beta hat, is x prime x inverse x prime y. And um, we should note that this inversion will only work if our MLR3 is given. So if we can assume that there's, if we know that there's no uh, exact linear relationship between the variables. Now further, we should also note that throwing together assumptions two and four, we can establish that the expected value of u conditional on x is equal to zero. Now this is a, a stronger assumption than four because in four it was the expected value of ui given all the xi's equal to zero. Now this indicator falls away and we are making the assumption that any value of u conditioned on the entire X matrix has an expected value of zero. We can make this generalization if assumption two is valid that uh, the data are randomly sampled. So with this under our belt, we'll go back to our OLS estimator equation, beta hat equals x prime x inverse x prime y, and we shall call it the hash equation, and we shall substitute the asterisk equation into the hash equation. So we'll replace the y in the beta hat equation with x beta plus u. The next step is to take the factor x prime x inverse x prime into the parenthesis and this is what we get. Now note that the very first factor is x prime x inverse times x prime x and that will just cancel each other out. A matrix inverted times the matrix itself is the identity matrix. So this is what we are left with. Now let's look at this. Very important is to recognize that that, ran, that um, u here is a random variable and consequently beta hat has to be a random variable as well. So beta hat's a random variable, that's absolutely crucial to remind yourself and it will have some distribution. As it turns out, asymptotically that distribution is normal. And we know normal distributions are characterized by the expected value and their variances. Now here, when we are thinking about unbiasedness, we will be interested in the expected value of beta hat. We therefore form the expectation of beta hat. That means we need to form the expectation of the right-hand side of our beta hat 
equation. And I left a little bit of space there with a purpose because we need to think about our explanatory variable x, what sort of characteristic that, ha that has. We have basically two options here. Either we can assume that that variable x is non-random or we condition on the particular values for the matrix x, x which we got. And this is the approach we're going to take here. And for this reason, we put these condition statements in the expectations operator. So the expected value of Peter hat conditioned on the particular values of x we have. So now on the right hand side, we'll just uh, write down the sum of the expectations rather than the expectations of the sum. Now the first bit here, the expected value of beta, beta is an unknown but constant coefficient vector. So since it's constant and not a random variable, its expectation is just going to be beta. Now the second term, since we condition on the particular x, we can actually take all the x terms out of the expectations operator. So we get plus x prime x inverse x prime times the expected value of u conditioned on x. Now this term has appeared before. This was the result of fusing together assumptions 2 and 4. The expected value of u conditional on x is 0. So that means we can conclude that given all our multiple linear regression assumptions 1 to 4, the expected value of beta hat is equal to beta and therefore beta hat is unbiased. So what does that mean? Remember the difference between estimator and estimate. We understand that under these conditions the estimator beta hat is unbiased. But as soon as we use our specific data set with values for y and x to calculate a beta hat we get an estimate and that estimate is a draw from the distribution for our estimator. Now we know now that this distribution is centered around the true but unknown value beta so we know that our particular beta hat we get from the data is a draw from a distribution that is unbiased.